Hi Waffle Flower friends, Katie Gehring here. I'm popping in with today's video to show you how I'm adding a little action to my card using a DIY action wobble spring. I gathered the supplies here that I used to make the spring. Most of these just came right out of my craft room, things that I had on hand, with the exception of this bead along wire that I picked up at Michael's in the jewelry making section. So to start, I used a piercer tool and I just pierced two holes in a scrap piece of white cardstock. And then I used a circle punch to kind of punch out circles which centered those pierced holes. And the size of this circle punch, I wanna say is about five eighths of an inch. So I'm going to punch both of those out from the white cardstock. Next, I am going to take the silver wire. Again, this is 26 gauge, and I'm just going to cut a small length of it using the snips that I use to cut apart my dies. And I'm going to take this wire and I'm going to wrap it around my piercing tool. You could also use a pen or a pencil or really anything that you have on hand that's um, small enough in diameter that's going to create a nice coil for you. So there is my coil and you can see that I've done about three revolutions around the piercing tool and I'm going to thread it through the circle cardstock and adhere it in place with just a little bit of score tape and I thread it through and turn it until the revolutions begin and the coil is going to lay somewhat flat and flush with the circle. After it's secured in place with a little bit of score tape, I'm just going to take my wire snips again and trim off any extra. I'm going to repeat the same action on the other end of the spring, just kind of threading on the circle cardstock, um, threading it until it starts the coil, and then I'm going to secure it again with score tape, trim off the extra with the wire snips, and then my coil will be ready for use a little bit later on when I get to that part of the card. And here I'm just giving it a little bit of a, a test wiggle and so that's gonna work really well. The stamp set that I'm using this technique with today is called Popping In. It's illustrated by Big Bear and Bird and features this darling little dresser with all kinds of accoutrement and cute little animals that are popping out of the drawers, hence the name Popping In. So I have arranged them onto a panel of white card stock. I'm just going to press down the lid of my Misty and then I'm going to ink up the stamps using a Copic Friendly ink. Um, I'm using brown because I'm gonna be using lots of tans and neutrals and um, earth tones in my card today. So I thought that a brown ink would blend really nicely. So I'm just inking this up. I want to make sure that I get a really good impression and I'm going to stamp it with my Misty and then stamp it again just to make sure that I've got really good solid coverage um, for all of these images. All of my images are stamped, but as a final step, I want to add this little pair of round eyeglasses to the bunny rabbit image. I just love these glasses. They kind of remind me of Harry Potter. So this is my little Harry Potter bunny. And um, there's everything all stamped out and ready for me to color. I'm coloring in the images using Copic markers. And for the dresser in the drawer, I am using the E30 color family. So this is going to include the markers E31, 33, 35, and I'm just sort of loosely coloring it in. I'm adding a few darker tones around the outer edge, kind of where it would be recessed, so I thought the drawers would be a little bit darker. And then along the, the bottom and perhaps where some shadows would be. But I'm not too worried about getting it um, super precise or super realistic just due to the whimsical nature of the stamp set um, it's really fun to color in because you can just kind of have fun and it's it's whimsical and it's not meant to be super realistic um, so images like this are just really a joy to color 
I've colored in the toy bear in yellow and then I kept the rabbit pretty much um, a neutral tone mostly white just using a little bit of a warm gray to add some shading and I'm just adding a little bit of pigment to his cheeks and his ears now I've gone back in with a darker um, E30 shade I think this is E39 and I'm just adding the knobs in place and um, I'm going to color in that cute little radio that's playing um, with some warm grays I'm kind of keeping the colors to the the tans that um, E30 color family and then also um, the yellow for the bear some grays and then um, some aqua blue accents and um, using just very very pale shades of um, the BG markers to do that. Now that everything is colored in I'm going to go ahead and die cut everything using the coordinating popping in dies. I'm going to run those through my Big Shot and those will pop out really nicely. I'm going to have to do a second round on that clock because um, it was a little too close to the dresser to get the dies to fit. So now I'm going to prepare my background and to do that I pulled out a panel of Distress Specialty Stamping Paper. I love this stuff. If you guys haven't had a chance to use it, it's fabulous. Um, it really makes ink blending quite easy. Um, it's got some type of specialty coating on it um, so that the ink just really glides across the surface. Um, it's really fun to work with. And so I have pulled out a panel of that and then I am using the Tumble Glass um, Distress Ink Mini Cube and um, a round circle dauber and I'm just going to create a little bit of an inked background that I'm going to use as the backdrop for my card. My backdrop is all finished and so now I'm going to just place my die cut elements onto the card. I need to figure out where I'm going to stamp my sentiment before I start adhering everything down. So I'm just figuring out the placement of everything, um, make sure all of the different elements are going to fit and I'm going to have room for my sentiment as well. I stamped my sentiment onto the specialty stamping paper using a brown stays on ink. Um, the paper has a little bit of a coating on it that um, makes it really easy for ink to glide on and I wanted my sentiment to dry quickly um, so that's why I opted for the brown stays on ink just to make sure that it was going to dry quickly and not smear on my finished product. So I'm just using a little bit of tape runner to adhere all of the different elements to the card. And now I am getting ready to add the action wobble to the drawer. I've pulled out the wobble spring that I created earlier and you'll recall that I use score tape um, on both sides of the cardstock circles to hold the spring in place. So I'm just making sure that none of this score tape is going to peek out um, past the die cut element. So I'm just using some scissors to trim away a little bit of excess. And now I'm peeling off the back of the score tape and I'm going to first adhere it to the drawer die cut and get that all situated. And then I will remove the rest of the score tape backing and I am going to adhere it right over where that drawer would be on the dresser. And so there it is and it is wobbling just the way it should. But the nice thing about this is even though it's definitely an action element, it's still something that's going to be flat for easy mailing so you would be able to pop that into the mail to a friend or a family member and the wobble action is just really a lot of fun. My final step will be just to adhere the completed panel to a note card that I made with craft card stock pressing it down to make sure that it is securely adhered and then I'm just going to give my little action wobble guy one last wiggle and call this one done. For more product information, please visit waffleflower.com. Follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook for even more creative ideas. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Have a great day.